I so this is gonna be another movie review. This one's called Conan the Destroyer, 1984. Epic sword and sorcery film. We like to call it Sword and Sandal on this channel. Directed by Richard Fleischer. Richard Fleischer did so many great movies. Barabbas. Soylent Green. This one. Uh, the Boston Strangler. The Jazz Singer. Amityville 3D. Great uh, director. I didn't even realize he made so many movies until I looked him up just now. Uh, it's, this movie is from a screenplay by Stanley Mann and a story by Roy Thomas and Jerry Conway based on the character Conan the Barbarian created by Robert E. Howard. It is a sequel to Conan the Barbarian, 1982. This one came out two years later, the same year as the Terminator. <clears throat> and um, Arnold says he wants to make another Conan movie in his elderly age. <laughs> We're still waiting for Arnold to make a third Conan movie. <laughs> the film stars Arnold Schwarzenegger and Mako reprising their roles as Conan and Akiro, the Wizard of the Mounds, respectively. The cast also includes Grace Jones, Wilt the Stilt, Chamberlain. He doesn't like to be called the Stilt. But that's what I remember him as when I was a kid. Tracy Walter from uh, Repo Man and a very young Olivia de Abo, 14, possibly 15 years old in this one. Uh, she kisses uh, Arnold on the lips, kind of uh, dirty. I'm giving this one five out of five stars. This is going to be one of those so bad that it's good type films. Any movie with uh, Grace Jones, Wilt the Still, Chamberlain, Tracy Walter, Andre the Giant, Mako, <laughs> and Olivia de Abo, Sarah Douglas. From the Superman series, she played the, uh, the the evil woman with the butch haircut. She was very attractive to me in uh, Superman and Superman Two, as the evil Krypton nemesis of Superman. You know, this movie is going to be good. It's got uh, Pat Roach, Jeff Corey, another blacklisted actor. Both Jeff Corey and um, and the other blacklisted actor from the last video that I uh, <coughs> that I mentioned. Who's the other blacklisted? Both of them were blacklisted. In the 50s. Uh, oh, Will Gear. So, um, both Will Gear and Jeff Corey were blacklisted actors who appeared in my favorite movie of all time, Seconds. Just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, this one had a budget of 18 million, box office of 26.4. To 31 million. I don't know why people say that this uh, toned down violence, family friendly movie, effectively killed the Conan franchise when it was such a when it was a reasonable success at the box office. It didn't make a ton of money, but um, it made a profit nonetheless. Conan the Destroyer was theatrically released in the United States on June 29th, 1984 by Universal Pictures. It kind of reminds me of uh, Krull or Masters of the Universe. That kind of flick. 
kind of goofy. Uh, the sets are uh, are amazing. I guess <laughs> I think the uh, eighteen million went into the sets. <laughs> Arnold wasn't that big of a star. I mean, Conan the Barbarian was certainly a, a launching pad for Arnold's career, but uh, he hadn't made the Terminator yet, so he wasn't a uh, superstar, so to speak, quite yet. Upon the re release, the film generally received mixed reviews from critics. It grossed between 26.4 million and 31 million in the United States. Made a decent amount of money. Not too bad. Conan and his companion, the thief Malak. That's the uh, the goofball from uh, Repo Man. <laughs> are confronted by Queen Taramis of Shadazar. That's the uh, that's the uh, Sarah Douglas character. Um, movie poster says the most powerful legend of all is back in the new adventure. Somewhere deep inside the mysterious phantom city lies the fiery temple of Jade. Concealed within its ancient chambers is the supreme instrument of life and death, the mystic horn of Dagoth. Dagoth is played by Andre the Giant, Rene Rusimov. Uh, <laughs> in a goofy looking rubber suit. <laughs> Only one man, Conan, has the power to recover it. A first Conan and his band of various of warriors must battle hostile ar armies, cross treacherous kingdoms, and challenge the sorcery of an evil queen. Uh, Sarah Douglas? It is Conan's greatest challenge, for if he cannot capture the horn in time, the world will be plunged into eternal darkness. <laughs> That's a cool looking movie poster. It goes for about $21 on eBay. <laughs> Not a bad deal. I wouldn't mind having that poster. That's one of the backgrounds, but I think I prefer seconds. Uh, Brazil. Um, what else? Uh, maybe 1984. Some, some of the more dystopian movie posters belong back there. <laughs> That's what uh, Professor's Quiz is waiting for. My Robin Hood stocks were up 70% in one month. Like I said, hopefully I can continue that throughout the end of the year. Max out my 401k, my life insurance, get a college fund for him, get a bigger apartment in San Mateo closer to him. But then I have to uh, commute far to my job, 25, 30 miles to my jobs in, uh, in Oakland and San Francisco. Still like a 30 minute drive, not too bad. Depending on traffic, but uh, maybe I can do that. Get get my DVD collection started. Uh, show you all my Netflix DVDs on YouTube, and uh, get some movie posters in the background, like Professor Quiz was suggesting. That's my dream. My my. Uh, plan for this year or next year depending on my how my uh, Robin Hood account goes all right let's get back into the plot uh, 
uh, Queen Teramis of Shadazar tests Conan and Malik's com combat ability with several of her guards. Satisfied, she tells Conan she has a quest for him. He refuses her, but when she promises to resurrect his lost love, Valeria, Conan agrees to the quest. He is to escort the queen's niece, Princess Jenna, a virgin. <clears throat> Very young Olivia de Abo. Who's destined to restore the jeweled horn of the dreaming god Dagoth. The magic gem heart of Ariman must first be retrieved in order to locate the horn. Conan and Malik are joined by Bombada. <clears throat> Wilt the still Chamberlain, the captain of Teramis's guard. Bombada has secret orders to kill Conan once the gem is obtained. Conan ends up killing him. <laughs> the gem is secured in the fortress of a powerful wizard. So Conan seeks the help of his friend Akiro, the wizard of the mounds, who must first be rescued from a tribe of cannibals who have captured him. That's uh, Mako, one of uh, Karate Man's favorite characters from a lot of different uh, action-type Karate Man movies. The adventurers encounter Zula, <laughs> played by the monkey-looking Grace Jones. <laughs> I won't say the B word, but uh, yeah, that's what Willie D calls her, monkey-looking B Grace Jones. <laughs> She's got the the uh, the muscular chest hanging out. <laughs> we love Grace Jones on this channel. <laughs> a powerful bandit warrior being tortured by vengeful villagers. <laughs> Freeing Zula at Jenna's request. <laughs> he just goes, he just takes her chain and he goes, bam, with the sword. <laughs> you gotta love Arnold's sword play in these movies. He's <sighs> like going crazy with the sword. <clears throat> And he always he always has the bulging eye, eyeballs when he unleashes a sword. <laughs> Great acting. Anyways, Conan accepts the indebted warrior's offer to join their quest. She's like begging to go along with him. <laughs> the adventurers travel to the castle of Thorth Amon, where the gem is located. As they sleep by the lake surrounding the castle, the wizard takes the form of a giant bird and he kidnaps Jenna. In the morning, Akiro divines this and also divine, he divines a hidden entrance to the castle through a water gate. As they search for Jenna, Conan is separated from the group and the others are forced to watch him battle a fierce man beast in a hall of mirrors. By breaking the mirrors, Conan mor mortally wounds the creature, which is revealed as a polymorphed Doth Amon. With the wizard's death, the castle begins to disintegrate, forcing the group's hasty retreat. They are ambushed by Teramis's guards, but they drive them off. Bombada feigns ignorance about the attack. The gem reveals where the jeweled horn is. Jenna expresses romantic interest in Conan, but he rebuffs her and he declares his devotion to Valeria. Kind of like uh, Vincent Price. <laughs> and uh, Dr. Fibes. <laughs> they reach an ancient temple where the horn is secured. Jenna obtains it while Akira deciphers engravings. He learns that Jenna will be ritually sacrificed to awaken Dagoth. They are attacked by the priests guarding the horn. A secret exit is revealed, but Bombada blocks the other's escape, and he seizes Jenna. Despite this treachery, Conan and his allies escape from the priests, and they trek to Shadazar to rescue Jenna. Malak shows them the secret route to the throne room. Conan confronts Bombada and he kills him in combat. 
no more wilt the stilt chamberlain. Zula impales the grand vizier before he can sacrifice Jenna. The rising Dagoth becomes distorted from a human statue into a monstrous, monstrous entity. It's Andre the giant Rene Rusimov in a rubber suit. He kills Taramis, then he attacks Conan. Zula and Malik join the fight, but Dagoth effortlessly sweeps them aside. Akira tells Conan that the horn is in the, is the monster's life, so he rips it out, then finishes him off. I think they delayed that Akiro discovery for a while to pad the time. It's only 100... One minute long, not too too long, but uh, one hour forty one minutes. The ideal time for a movie, in my view, is one hour thirty minutes. But uh, it depends on the movie. I'll watch a movie that's two hours, like Johnny Got His Gun, and still enjoy it. The newly crowned Queen Jenna offers each of her companions a place in her own court. Zula will be the new captain of the guard. Akura, Akuro, the queen's advisor, and Malik, the court, gen, the court jester. Uh, when John Milius, director of Conan the Barbarian, was unavailable, Dino De Laurentiis suggested Richard Flight. Richard Fleischer to his daughter, Rafaela de, de Laurentiis, who was producing Conan the Destroyer. Fleischer had already made Barabbas, 1961, and Mandingo, 1975, for Dino de Laurentiis. I had no idea Barabbas was the uh, Dino de Laurentiis film until just now. <laughs> Conan the Barbarian made about $40 million at the U.S. box office when it was released in 1982 with an R rating, an additional $50 million in other markets. Because Universal Pictures and producer Dino De Laurentiis thought it would have been even more successful if it had been less violent, they wanted to tone down the violence in the sequel. Conan the Destroyer originally received an R rating like its predecessor, but the film was recut to secure a PG rating. So um, there's a decapitation, and uh, when Arnold rips the thorn out of uh, of uh, the uh, Day off monster. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot the monster's name. The day off monster. Um, that seemed pretty violent to me, but uh, I think day off also gets stabbed in the back or something. Uh, Fleischer delivered a movie that was less violent, somewhat more humorous than the first, although some scenes of violence have bloody results. The PG-13 rating didn't exist until July 1st of the same year. Cario Ramboldi created the Dagoth. Carlo Ramboldi. Uh, who did King Kong and Alien. Created the Dagoff monster. <laughs> Looks like a ridiculous monster costume. <laughs> I love that monster costume. Arnold Schwarzenegger and Mako Iwamatsu, that's his full name. Mako Iwamatsu, pardon my pardon my Japanese, who played the Wizard of the Mound and narrator in the first film, returned for the second film, while Mako's character is now named Akiro. Sven Ols Thorson, who played Thorgrim in the first film, also returned, but this time he had to partially cover his face with a mask as he was playing a different character. <laughs> I guess he was the uh, the wizard guy. Uh, Togra was his name. 
Singer Grace Jones played the warrior Zula, the last of her tribe. This was the basketball player Wilt the Stilt Chamberlain's only film role and the debut of Olivia de Abo played the, the petulant teenage princess. <laughs> David Lander was originally cast to play the foolish keep thief Malik, but due to his deteriorating health from the onset of multiple sclerosis, he was forced to quit the project and the part was recast with Tracy Walter, professional wrestler Pat Roach, who memorably, who memorably played the German mechanic in Raiders of the Lost Ark and the thuggy overseer in Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom was cast as Crystal Palace man-ape sorceress, sorcerer Toth Amon. Andre the, the giant Rene Rusmas had an uncredited role as the Dagoth monster. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, that uh, that red line energy drink really kicked me in the butt for about six hours. And then I crashed hard and, and uh, had a power nap for 30 minutes. So uh, I'm still procrastinating on my uh, You Bet Your Life videos. Conan the Destroyer was the fourth film on which British director of photography, Jack Cardiff, worked with Fleischer. Cardiff had already photographed the Vikings, 1958, Cross Swords, 1977, and Amityville 3D, 1983 for the director. They worked together twice more on Million Dollar Mystery, 1987, and Fleischer's last film, The Short Call from Space, 1989, which was shot in 65 millimeter show scan process. Cardiff's other no notable films include John Huston's The African Queen, 1951, King Vi Vidor's War and Peace, 1956, and Rambo, First Blood Part II, 1985 which I have seen on the green, on the big screen. Shooting took place in Mexico City from November 1st, 1983 to February 10th, 1984. In the film, a camel is knocked to the ground and after struggling to get back up, its hind legs are drawn forward with wires. So they're forced to sit down before falling to the ground. The sequence is cut from the UK version, although the later scene in which Conan apologized to the camel is left in. Also cut is a double horse fall in the opening battle. To secure a PG rating, Sarah Douglas said several scenes involving her character were cut, including a sex scene with Schwarzenegger slapping Chamberlain, a virgin sacrifice, and a seduction of a statue. The musical score of Corn and the Destroyer was composed, conducted, and produced by Basil Polidorus. who also did the score for Conan the Barbarian. It was performed by the orchestra Unoni Musi Music Isti di Roma, part of my Italian. Conan the Destroyer grossed $31 million in the U.S. Schwarzenegger, Fleischer, and De Laurentiis subsequently teamed up again to make Red Sonia a year later. The film, jointly with Bolero, was nominated for two Razzie Awards, including Worst Supporting Actress and one Worst New Star for De Abo during the fifth Golden Raspberry Awards. We love, uh, we love Olivia De Abo on this channel. <laughs> One of the best, worst actors ever. Roger Ebert rated the film three out of four stars, and he wrote that Conan the Destroyer is sillier, funnier, more entertaining than the first film, and praising the film's use of character actors. Ebert singled out Jones, who said, brings rock star charisma to her role. <laughs> She's got a funny voice. Kind of like a man's voice. <laughs> Variety called it the ideal sword and sorcery picture and also praised Jones 
Vincent Canby of the New York Times wrote that Schwarzenegger struggles with the film's more comedic tone. Colin Greenland reviewed Conan the Destroyer for Image magazine, and he stated that apart from the fact that it's acted by real people, Conan the Destroyer's pure comic book, which has the odd effect of making the actual animated comic book largely superfluous, Rotten Tomatoes, which collects both commentary and modern re reviews, reports that 27% of 26 surveyed critics gave the film a positive review. The average rating is 4.4 out of 10. <coughs> On IMDb, it gets a 5.9 out of 10, 82,000 ratings. The site's consensus states Conan the Destroyer softens the edges that gives that gave its predecessor gravitas, resulting in campy sequel without the comparative thrills. Yeah, it's campy, all right. Like I said, it's one of those so bad that it's good type films. At Megacritic, the film received a score of 53 out of 100 based on 12 reviews indicating mixed or average reviews. I guess a 5.9 out of 10 on IMDb. I always go by IMDb. I don't know why Wikipedia likes uh, Rotten Tomatoes and Metacritic. All right, here we go. Marvel Comics published a comic book adaption of the film by writer Michael Fleischer and artist John Busima and Mar Marvel Super Special number 35, December 1984. That would be a good uh, collector's item. The adaption was also available as a two issue limited series. Roy Thomas and Jerry Conway wrote the original story treatment, but were dissatisfied with the final screenplay by Stanley Mann and the finished film. They made their story into a graphic novel, Conan the Barbarian, the Horn of the Azoth, published in 1990 with art by Mo Mike Doher Do Doherty. Excuse me. The names of the characters were changed to distance the graphic novel from the movie. Dagoth became Azoth. Jenna became Natari. Zula Zula became Shumbala, Bombada became Strabo, Thoth Amon became Ramon, and the characters of Queen, Queen Teramis and the leader were combined into sorcerer Carenthus, father of Natari. Robert Jordan wrote a novelization of the film in 1984 for Tor Books. The third film in the Conan trilogy had been planned for a 1987 release with the title Conan the Conqueror. The director was to have been either Guy Hamilton or John Gullerman. Arnold Schwarzenegger was committed to the film Predator and De Laurentiis' contract with the star had expired after his obligation to Red Sonia, his role in which was originally intended to be Conan and Raw Deal, and he had not he was not keen to negotiate a new one. The third Conan film fell into development hell, the script eventually being turned into Cole the Conqueror. Starring Kevin Sorbo. In October 2020, 2012, in October 2012, Universal Pictures announced plans for Schwarzenegger to return the role of Conan for the film The Legend of Conan. The planned story was a direct sequel to the original film, bypassing Conan the Destroyer, and the 2011 film starring Jason Moma, Momoa. So there's a Conan the Barbarian remake. <clears throat> Starring Jason Momoa. I didn't even know that until I read it on Wikipedia. In the years following the announcement, Will Bale, Andrea Burloff, and producer Chris Morgan worked on the script. And Schwarzenegger expressed 
enthusiasm for the project, affirming plans to star in the film. However, in April 2017, Morgan stated that Universal had dropped the project, but there were, remains a possibility of a television series. In October 2019, Arnold Schwarzenegger confirmed that the film was still at an active development, now called Conan the King, which is probably the title of another comic book. <laughs> I used to collect Conan comics, by the way. <laughs> Kim Wayans' spoof portrayal of Grace Jones on the show In Living Color, based on Grace's performance of Zula, Conan the Destroyer. In 1985, Australian heavy metal music group Prowler changes its name to Taramis after the character from the film. And that's all I have to say about Conan the Destroyer. I'm up over 30 minutes. I went through the whole Wikipedia spiel. In my last video, I went through my list. I showed you the Conan the Destroyer disc. And in one of my previous videos, I told you about what's coming down the pike for next week. Coneheads and Mr. Acadian. Arcadian, excuse me, Mr. Arcadian, 1955 with Orson Welles. So there you have it. Good luck finding my videos on YouTube because they're getting longer and longer. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. Laters.